yoga for everyday people. This is called Rock the Pelvis and Maintaining a Healthy Spine and Healthy Back. So hopefully you've had a look at episode number two um, where we shared the disclaimer with you, the health disclaimer. If not, can you please go and review it? Um, and before we um, begin to look at rocking the pelvis and how to do a very simple bridge, I've brought my friend in, the spine and the pelvis. So I thought we'd do a little bit of basic anatomy to begin with. So, if you were able to see through me, you'd be able to see the core of my being, the skeleton, looking like so. So some basic anatomy shall follow. So this is the pelvis. Here we have the pubic bone in front, and these are the seating bones underneath. Here we have one pelvic heart, and here you have the hip socket that links into one of your legs and obviously you have another pelvic half that makes up the whole of the pelvic basin. If we have a look at the back of the skeleton, you can see here that we have a little tailbone right at the bottom. Yep. And then we have a triangular bone called the sacrum. Um, these are usually considered to be two separate bones, two separate vertebrae. Um, and then as we move up the spine, we have five lumbar vertebrae, five, four, three, two, one. Twelve thoracic vertebrae, and the twelve thoracic vertebrae, there's twelve of them because the rib cage links into them. So we go 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And this one, the top thoracic vertebrae, you can usually feel up the back here at the base of your neck. It links in with one of the cervical vertebrae. And we have seven neck vertebrae or seven cervical vertebrae. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one right at the top here underneath the base of the skull. In between the vertebral bodies, so here you have these big chunky things that look like cotton reels. These are called the vertebral bodies. In between we have the shock absorbers that are fluffy pillows that are filled up with fluid. Um, and obviously they're shock, these are called intervertebral discs and they're shock absorbers because when we walk, when we jump, when we run, rather than the um, vertebral bodies getting the impact of the, the thing that we're doing, the intervertebral discs are there to help manage that shock. So a lot of people come to me and they say that their back aches, lower back, upper back, and they've not done any movement in a long time or they sit in the classic C position, okay? And what I find is that they've lost the mobility in their pelvis, so the pelvis should be able to rock like so. And they also, I also see that a lot of the vertebrae, each of these are joints, they should move segmentally, they have a range of motion. A lot of them are moving in chunks. So what we start to do through our yoga practice, which is wonderful, is that we begin to um, free up all these structures so that they can have a certain range of movement. Now obviously the spine is held together by a series of ligaments and muscles, but we're not going to go into that level of detail. And when they don't have when we don't have the ligaments and the muscles there, and we have the spine as it is, you have quite a big range of movement, but obviously we don't have that range um, really. So this is spinal extension, which we're going to explore in a moment. And also you can round the back and take it into spinal flexion. And you can see how the vertebral bodies all separate when we go into flexion and how the vertebral bodies all come together at the back in extension, but how the front of the spine opens up. And this is wonderful for the discs this movement because it enables the um, intervertebral discs to let go of um, toxins and to draw in nutrients which the spine absolutely adores. So in a moment Ben and I are going to show you how to rock the pelvis and how to increase your segmental mobility in your back by focusing on a pose in this section called the bridge. See you in a moment. Hello, so we're going to look at um, our first yoga pose of the uh, series um, called a bridge. Um, so you've got two wonderful different bodies here that are going to demonstrate to you um, how a bridge looks like um, depending on our body shapes. So we're both going to lie down now, Ben and I are both going to lie down. And so 
The first thing you need to check is when you're lying down is that your feet are hip width apart and parallel um, and close to the bottom if possible. However, if you experience any knee discomfort, you might find that you need to walk the feet slightly further away from the bottom and equally having a wider stance or splaying the feet away from each other might be beneficial for your knees. But classically, the pose is taught with the feet hip width apart, close to the bottom and um, parallel. Um, we're checking that our shoulders are relaxed away from our ears and that our chin is tucked towards our chest and our arms rest parallel to the sides of the body, palms touching the floor. So Ben's going to keep his arms in this position but so that you can see what's going on with the pelvis, I'm going to move my right arm away from my body. So we had the little anatomy lesson earlier. The back of the pelvis, the sacrum and the tailbone are touching the floor at this moment in time. Um, and we want to begin to rock the pelvis. So the easiest way to rock the pelvis is if you visualize you have a clock on your tummy and 12 o'clock is at the base of the breastbone and six o'clock is towards the pubic bone area. And in the middle of the clock you have a marble and all we're going to do is we're going to take the marble to 6 and to 12 o'clock to begin to rock the pelvis, checking that the head's nicely aligned. We begin to take the marble to 6 o'clock so you feel the lower back arching and then we take the marble to 12 o'clock so you feel the lower back flattening to the floor. So we go 6 to 12. Very simple. And when we do these movements in yoga, we're very aware of how they make us feel. We're not doing them mechanically. And to help us stay in the present moment, we add the breath. So when we take the marble to six o'clock, we breathe in. And when we take the marble to 12 o'clock, we breathe out. So we're going six o'clock, and 12 o'clock. So hopefully you've had a look at the health disclaimer. Check in and if you do have a back sensitivity, become aware how does this make your back feel. And if for any reason you're experiencing some sort of discomfort, then stop, go seek advice and then come back and try it again. But for well, most of us, the majority of people, and people with back sensitivities, this movement should feel wonderful and nourishing. Okay, so we've learned how to rock the pelvis. Now we want to come up into a low bridge. So when I'm ready to, on my inhale, I push, or we push through our feet, and we feel the tailbone unpeeling from the floor and slowly the sacrum unpeels from the floor and eventually the lower lumbar vertebrae, maybe five and four, come up off the floor. Can we pause here, become aware of how we're feeling and maybe even feel the gluteal muscles or the buttock muscles to see if they're beginning to engage. These muscles should start to switch on. Having checked, you can just relax the arms. And then when we're ready to breathe out, we come down, trying to isolate each of those vertebral bodies. So if you visualize your back is a string of pearls, or the spine is a string of pearls, you want to push each of those pearls into the floor. So the lower vertebrae come into the floor, the lower lumbar vertebrae, the sacrum connects with the floor, and eventually the tailbone does by taking that marble down to six o'clock. So let's go up a little bit higher. So as we breathe in, the tailbone, the sacrum, lumbar vertebrae, five, four, and maybe hold on, just three and two come up off the floor. Don't worry if you can't feel it, just practice. So you're in, you're in a low bridge. So you've come up to beneath the waist. You're not at waist level yet. And the lower back is rounded here. And having the lower back rounded is very good for building core strength in particular and also beginning to stretch out the muscles closest to the skin. So we're ready to come down again. So as we breathe out, down we go. Push those vertebrae into the floor. Don't worry which ones you're pushing. 
push them into the floor and eventually the back of the pelvis comes down and the tailbone goes down. Okay, let's go up a little bit higher. So as we breathe in, tailbone sacrum, the lower vertebrae of the lumbar come up off the floor, the higher vertebrae, and perhaps now you're finding that the waist is unpeeling up off the floor. So we're perhaps going into the lower thoracic vertebrae now. Still the lower back is curved. There's an emphasis on having the lower back curved. And we pause and we hold here for a moment or two. And then when we're ready to, we slowly come down, vertebrae by vertebrae, feeling the lower thoracic vertebrae come into the floor. The lumbar vertebrae keeping the back grounded, the sacrum, and then the tailbone. Fantastic. How are you doing? Does this feel lovely? Okay, so let's go up a little bit higher. So tailbone sacrum on the inhale. L5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thoracic, 12, 11, 10. So you've just unpeeled to waist level and the emphasis is on keeping the back rounded. So if you have a particular back sensitivity that you're working with, if you're feeling unwell, then going up any higher than this point is not beneficial for you. There's no need to. Staying in this low bridge, checking that your buttocks are engaged, is more beneficial for you than going up into a higher one, which will demonstrate in the fullness of time. And then when we're ready to, we slowly come down, vertebrae by vertebrae, rounding the back pushing each of those pearls into the earth until eventually the tailbone comes down. Okay, so remember if you have a back sensitivity, you play with this, just coming up to waist level and flowing back down to the earth. Coming up to waist level and flowing down to the earth with the emphasis, your focus being on the segments. If you don't have any of the above problems that I've just mentioned, you can come up a little bit higher. And again, obviously, you too are focusing on the segments of the back as well. So when you're ready to, on your next inhalation, the tailbone comes up, the sacrum follows, flow into L5 all the way up to L1, into the lower thoracic vertebrae, so those of you with a back sensitivity, when you feel your waist and peeling, you stop and hold here. If you have none of the above, you come up a little bit higher to the point just beneath the shoulder blades and pause and hold here. And if you have come up higher, you will note that keeping the back rounded is not possible. So you begin to engage different muscles as you take your back into a slight back bend. And then we slowly come down again. As we come down, we round. So we round and we come down. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Ah, until eventually we push the tailbone into the floor. Okay, and we can come up a little bit higher again. So on an inhale, the tailbone comes up, the sacrum. Flowing up the lumbar vertebrae and peeling the back, the lower back off the floor, coming up to waist level. Pause in here if you need to. Alternatively, come all the way up onto the tops of your shoulders. Push through your feet, squeeze your bottom muscles, make any little adjustments you need to make. Check you have a little beach ball between your thighs and you want to grip that little beach ball so you're keeping the thighs and the knees parallel. So Ben's going to demonstrate interlacing the hands behind the back and drawing the shoulder blades to the spine and taking his hands towards his feet and coming up, opening the chest, coming up a little bit higher. So I'm going to place my right arm back down to the sides of the body. And you watch, I need to walk my feet back a little bit to take myself up a little bit higher. Okay, so Ben's got his hands interlaced. I'm now joining Ben. Okay, and either you have the ability to do this next bridge or you're going back a stage 
or to if you're experiencing any type of discomfort. So if you have the ability, you come up onto the balls of your feet and then you put one hand beneath the waist, the other hand beneath the waist, and then you flatten your feet onto the earth. And this should feel comfortable. If it doesn't feel comfortable, if you can't get the elbows in to be parallel, then you need to go back a stage and then you pause and hold a few nice deep breaths and relax into the shape. So when we're ready to come out of it, we're checking our footprints, making sure we're leaving a good footprint on the earth. And when we remove the hands, we don't want to drop the height of the pelvis. So we're removing the hands, but we're staying up high. And then we release the shoulders and we slowly uncurl, coming down, pushing the vertebrae, rounding the back, coming down. Did you see how I move my feet forward? To give myself the space to allow the back to come down, lengthening, lengthening as I push each of the vertebrae into the floor until eventually the sacrum, the back of the pelvis, and the tailbone come down. So after that lovely strong back bend, we need to counter the shape that we've just created by drawing the knees up to the belly and rocking the knees towards the belly, away from the belly. So as we breathe out, the knees come towards, and on the inhale, the knees go away. Breathing out, the knees come towards, and on the inhale, the knees go away. Then you may intuitively want to create some circles. Inhaling the knees away and exhaling the knees towards. And then if you circle in one direction, intuitively you wish to circle the opposite way. And then just place the feet on the floor, relax the arms to the side, and just pause to feel the effects of your practice. I, ben and I hope you've enjoyed exploring um, bridge with us um, we look forward to seeing you in um, the next episode where we're going to explore rocking the pelvis and segmental mobility in another pose known as cat in yoga namaste and see you on the mat soon